My name is, is uh, Samuel Rosé. Um, we're going to talk about Symphony Messenger. And first question is, um, who's already used the Symphony Messenger? Okay, so you're free. And um, who doesn't know anything about it? Nice. Okay. So I'm, I'm uh, kind of the one behind the, at least the initial implementation of the Messenger. It's kind of evolved a lot. Um, the idea is to, for me to give you a, a rough summary of the different concepts first, and then it's just about you doing some code. It's quite a small room still, so if you have any questions, just like stop me, raise the hand, and then we, we, can, we can cover that. Um, the, the only uh, rule that uh, is important in the workshop is just that there's no dumb, no dumb question. So any single question will be available for somebody else as well, so just don't hesitate, okay? That makes it make sense? Great. So, yes, that was this slide. Workshop's master plan, I give you a brief introduction of the messenger component, and then we code. So, what is Symphony Messenger about? So, there are a few concepts. The core, the five core concepts, or the first thing is there are messages. So a messages is just a PHP class. It's plain your own thing that you're in your application you will implement. And this message, you will actually push it somewhere to a message bus. The message bus is just a place where you, yeah, you dispatch a message. And then behind that, on the other side of the bus, there are message handlers. So there are things that will actually execute some logic when the message is received. That's the, that's the main idea. Now, that is these three concepts are already super interesting and very valuable if you want to go into the CQRS route or, or, or things like that, where you actually create commands, you actually create queries and, things and, and so on using a bus. But on top of that, and that's the, the, the main added value of uh, messenger components, at least in Symfony, is that you can uh, route some messages to some transports. So when you dispatch a message to the bus, you can at some point decide that actually this message should not be handled right now. It should go through a RabbitMQQ or it should go through something else so that you can handle the message asynchronously. And that is via the transports. And the fifth part, which is just the, the, the kind of the glue, is just the worker part. So in order to, when you publish a message to RabbitMQ, for example, to a queuing system, then you need to have something running that listens to these messages. And that would be your worker. The exact same thing, but as a graph, is that you have a message, you dispatch it to the message bus, and it will be handled by one or many handlers. Additionally, if you want to, you can actually route these messages to some transports. These transports are responsible for talking to um, any kind of thing, RabbitMQ, anything. You can create your own, that's not, that's not a problem. Um, and then there's the worker, which is something that is running outside of your web server, or at least outside of the HTTP request. There's this worker that receives messages from the transports and dispatches them up to back to the bus for the handlers to be to be called. So, how does it look like? In terms of code, as m I mentioned, a message is something that you dispatch to the bus. A message has no requirements. So compared to things like the event dispatcher, for example, where you, your event needs to extend the event uh, uh, class, then here, your message has no requirement. It's just your own PHP class. So that's an example I'm going to use across the, the, the slides, which is send notification. So that's your message that you kind of use as a, a command or just a message that says you want to send a uh, a notification that contains this message to a, s a set of, u of uh, users. It's just your own thing. Now, what you can do is to use the Symfony Messenger as a, compon uh, as a component. That's the only slide which is about the component itself, um, because we will just use the integrated version within, within the Symfony framework bundle and so on. But everything that I, I will show you is, uh, is possible to do just using the, the component. Now, the, f the thing that you can actually see here is that there is no, so the previous slide, there is no specific requirement for the message. And here it shows you that actually a message bus is quite, it's actually nothing. The message bus is just an array of things, and these things we call them middleware. We'll go through and we'll play, play with that, but that's basically what gives the, the logic to the bus. 
And the way it works internally is that for a specific class, you have this handler locator thing. For a specific class, a notification, you need to, to map it to an handler. Again, there is no, almost no requirement. An handler is just a PHP callable, so it can be a function. Like the, the handler that takes your my message, and that's it. Now, in your Symfony application, you don't have to do some anything. Uh, realistically, Composer requires your messenger, and you're done. You can start using the, 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 the messenger component and the bus. You don't have to create these this things. Huh? So that's uh, really if you want to do your custom stuff. Now, how it will look like to use this send notification message I've showed you, it is just about you, you can inject the message bus interface into, um, into something. So here's the example where you in inject it into the, the, the controller of, uh, uh, or into the action, into one action on a, one controller. And then you can call bus dispatch your new message. So does that, does that uh, syntax of like injecting the, the, the services in the, in the action make sense to everybody? OK, let's, let's turn it the other way around. Who didn't know that we can inject services in the, in the action? I got everybody new. Good. It's quite new, actually. So these are just the important parts. Now, if you actually do that, what will happen? It will you have you will have this beautiful error message that says, "Well, actually, there is no handler for this message. By default, you need to have an handler for it." So, if you have that, what it means is that you need to create this handler, which is the fourth concept. And the handler again is just a, a, a simple class or a simple a callable. So what you will need is to, or what you can do, uh, is to create a class with the uh, underscore underscore invoke uh, magic method so that your, your class instance is just a PHP callable. And you can say it will get this, the send notification message and then do whatever it needs to do. That's the very requirement of an handler. Now, if you do that, if you just put that class, it will not do anything because Symfony won't know about it. So you would have the same, the same error. So you need to register your handler. I'm going to go very quickly, but there are multiple ways to do that. We will play with it. But the first way to register your handler is just to create a service with a specific tag, messenger that message, uh, message handler. That's the first way. The second way is to say, well, I can also use this, this kind of like discovery syntax to say that everything which is in the message handler the source message handler folder will actually be automatically tagged as messenger.message handler. That's the second way. You also have a third way, which is, oh, it's after. I'll show you the, the third way after. But I'll show you, uh, yeah, I think it makes sense to, 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 to discuss it now. Actually, you can just implement an interface. And now um, it will automatically, with the auto configuration feature of Symfony, if you just add the message handler interface, uh, interface to your to your handler, it will automatically configure it as a service that has the me the messenger dot message handler tag. So you don't need to play with services and so on anymore. Now, if you do that, then you're done. Uh, this is the example, quite an old uh, screenshot, but this is the example of the of the of what would happen if we run the code that I've showed you. It just does the, sends the, it does the loop, basically. Uh, it goes through, through these things and displays something on the screen. And you're done. Now, for the sake of the, um, of the, the send kind of like summary, we basically just use this part, right? A message dispatches to the bus, and then there are handlers being handled. That's it. Now, and that's exactly the example we are going to use uh, and to, to play with, but imagine the, the handler takes a lot of time. Here's the example where I actually would take uh, almost, almost a minute to run some stuff. What you can decide to do is to say, well, I'm going to put everything as asynchronous, or at least this message, send notification, will be asynchronous. So that's the interesting part. So you will have to configure this message bus to actually send the message to a transport and, and to use the worker to get the message. So just before, what is a transport? It's just something that sends and receives messages. 
Um, it is something like the database URL that we have in Doctrine now, which is like Postgres, uh, comma, uh, column, slash, slash, something, or MySQL, and so, and so forth. Uh, a transport is just a something that is also configurable using a, using a DSN. And it, uh, it uses a serializer. It's a, quite a, an implementation detail, but it's super important to understand that as soon as we actually start to use asynchronous processing, as soon as we start to use queues, it means that our messages need to be serializable. So typically, uh, don't put resources into these messages, or don't put some weird thing that cannot be serialized. So that's an important thing. By default, it, us it uses the Symfony Serializer. You can replace it as you wish. Um, but that's something to really consider when we go asynchronous. And we we'll play with that as well. So how it looks like for you in the configuration framework, Messenger transports, you can create your MyQ transports. And here's the example of the DSN. You can actually say you don't have to use an environment variable. Um, that's the default when you actually compose a require uh, messenger. It will look like that. And then you can say that's a name QP, so RabbitMQ, uh, on localhost, uh, using guest guest, and on the messages uh, queue and exchange. So that's how you would do it. Right? Once you've configured your transport, then nothing will change. The thing you need to do now is to route a specific message to your transport. So you will have to say, in the routing configuration of, of Messenger, you have to say this send notification message will go through the MyQ transport. If you do that, when you actually run the application, it's going to be super, super fast. But that's p fast PHP. But the problem is that uh, nothing happened. So now we need to use the, f the, f the, the, the fifth concept, which is the worker, to be able to get the message from the transports and actually execute it. And that is the concept. So there is a um, common line tool. It's called Messenger Consume. There's other ones will play with that as well. But basically, you need to run this command somewhere in order to have something listening to the queue or to whatever thing you use as a transport so that when a message is actually dispatched to this transport, there is something else running or doing the execution of the messages or the ending of the messages. So if you, do, if you run the, the, the same example, um, it will actually, you can run bin uh, console messenger consume, and basically you can, you see the log of the send notification to X, Y, Z, but that's in the CLI. So now it is handled asynchronously, i.e. it's not handled in the, in the context of the HTTP request, it's handled as part of this thing that is running somewhere else. So, what I suggest we do is that we start to use the application together. Um, so there is a piece of code in the VM um, already pre-installed for you. If you don't use the VM, um, give me your hand and then I will uh, give you the, the link of the GitHub uh, repo. I will write the uh, GitHub repo on the screen. Here's the link, if you don't have it. So it's a very simple, small, it's a small Symfony application that already has a lot of things configured. So it uses the, the it has messages, it has handlers, it has a fantastic UI. You'll see my CSS skills. Um, and then we will just build on top of it. Is that big enough? So if I run server run, and I go to the actual link of the application, then you should see something like that. Actually, I've played with it yesterday, so I need to... Uh, You should 
see something like that. That's just the, basic, the beginning, so we just need everybody to be there after you want to follow the exercise or not, it's your, it's your problem, but just if you need any, uh, any help to have that running, just let me know, we'll do that. Yeah. Great. So, our application is a great um, platform so that you can register bets and you can know whether you won uh, or lost uh, your bet after whatever game. So the, the, the idea is that you are going to register a bet. You say, okay, that's for, um, I don't know, France, Brazil. That's going to be 3 zero, for example can bet, and then you can also say, oh, well, actually, um, somebody else actually just put the same bet for another game. And then, um, once we have placed some bets, then we can, as a sort of admin, or whoever knows about the game's results, can actually say, well, I will report the game results. So actually, the real result was um, France Brazil was actually 3-0, uh, and then report the result. And it will actually be able to say, well, um, Sam won, but Gary lost, for example. That is the basic of our application. So, the way it works is that it uses Messenger for basically everything. So, if you look at the default controller, what happens is that um, you will have a home action, which is just registering the root, the home page, um, using the add template so that we can just use tweak to render the form and the HTML and so on. What it will do is two things. The first thing is that it will have, it will dispatch a get bets message to the bus. And it will somehow get the results of the list of the bets. So that's the first interesting thing in here. So actually, so if you look at the definition of the Symfony uh, Messenger um, interface, you can see that the dispatch method can take a message or an envelope, and we'll, we'll, we'll play with it and we'll, we'll discover what it is really, but. It dispatch, you can dispatch a message and then it returns an envelope object. It's something that wraps the object. From this envelope, you have an option of stamps. We'll really like, go deeper into like, creating our own and so on, but the idea is that when the execution of the message happened, or happens, there are multiple uh, stamps that will be added. And what it means is that we can actually get the last stamp that is the handled stamp, and actually get the result of whatever handler was used to actually handle the get bets message. This is a specific use case. That's why I'm starting to, to mention it, so we don't go through it too much anymore. But that is the way you can actually dispatch a message, have the handler doing something, and then get the result back. This works only synchronously, so it will not work if you push that to a transport or something. Now, what is this get bets thing? What is handling the get bets? Well, if you look on the left, there is the message handler. Sorry, I cannot zoom in the, the hierarchy. But in the message handler folder, there is the get bets handler. And as I mentioned, it is just a class that implements a message handler interface. So it's automatically wired in. And it says, it, it says using the type int, it says, I want to handle the get bets messages. And then I'm going to do some stuff here. It's just using Doctrine and saying, um, basically, uh, get the repository for the bet and then find all. The default configuration uses a SQLite data database, so it should all work for you. Now, that is basically the auto-wiring uh, and auto-configuration uh, in, in practice. So because of the type int, Symfony will auto and the interface, Symfony will automatically understand that this is the handler and that because of that type in that it wants to handle this specific message. Now, 
So that's the first, the, the first thing. If you look at the rest of the um, examples, so basically register a bet. The only thing that it does is to dispatch new register bet. So that's, as I mentioned earlier, that's just our own message. We can put whatever we want. But in here, there's just a few properties. And that's the message you dispatch. Same idea, register bet. We'll have an handler called register bet handler, which will be the same thing. It has a message handler interface. And, and is a PHP callable, so has the underscore underscore invoke, get the regi register bet, and does whatever it needs to do. Right? Simple. Now, the last case I want to show you before we start doing some code is the, the, the example of the um, bet result under. I should have showed you this slide actually, which is the, which is the, the sort of the architecture uh, of our uh, demo application. We have a bunch of messages already. We have register bet, report game result, and get all bets. We're all getting dispatched to a common bus, to a bus. We'll discuss different buses and so on, but they were getting handled by some handlers, so the classes with the interface and the, the, the type in for the message. These handlers, at least one of them, will actually, which is the report, when the report game result handler will actually process the result, it will dispatch either a one bet or lost bet message that will go to a bus and then there's potentially handlers. So that's the, the architecture of our application. The, the, the last one, the last handler we didn't see here is the um, report result uh, thing. Actually, it's not the last one. Report result, handler, same idea. We get the report, report result message. And then what it can do, though, is that it will also, the handler can be injected the even bus itself, so an handler will be able to dispatch new messages. So in this example, report results do a extremely complex mathematical co uh, calculation to understand whether you won or you lost the bet, and then dispatch the messages. And these messages will be handled by something. And this something is the bet result handler class. That one is slightly weirder. First of all, because it's uh, for the sake of the demonstration, uh, sleep one, so it is a something that it takes a long time to run. But the main thing is that it's not a message handler interface. It's a message subscriber interface. And what you can see here is that you have a get handle messages. That is a static function. If you used, very likely you used the event subscriber, uh, the, event dispatcher, the event dispatcher's subscriber, this is the kind of the same idea, where you can say this thing will actually handle all the messages of type game result message. So you can yell multiple times and so on. So you can handle multiple type of messages. And you can say, actually, instead of using the underscore underscore invoke thing, you can actually say, well, actually, we will use another method on the same handler. And more interestingly, you can also say, you can select which bus you want to listen messages from. By default, you don't have to do that. It will just listen to the one default bus for the sake of the demo, and we'll play with, with that probably after the break, but there are two buses in this application. Now, the interesting thing as well is that here, if you look at get, get result message, it's actually an interface. It's not a message. So, and this is implemented by lost and one. Right? So you can actually, in the, in the handler and in the, the message subscriber, you can also say, I will get all the messages that match this contract, so either the interface or the abstract class or things like that. Yeah? Do you know, little quiz, do you know why we use yield uh, message and not return array as we do in the... Uh, even dispatchers, uh, even subscriber. Yeah, any idea? Do you have any like guesses or? So 
Yes, but um, it doesn't make a big difference because we need to execute that anyway to configure the, the container. So it's basically at build time we need to, to call these things. Any other idea? Sorry? Maybe. It's a big difference in memory consumption. That's kind of correct, I think. I think. I'm not sure. The main reason actually is that yield can can return multiple times the same value. So actually what you can do is to say, well, I want first of all, I just want to wrap this thing, uh, this uh, game result message. But I also actually I just want it to be called on the bus uh, X. But you can also say, well, actually, I want this message on the bus uh, Y. Or this message needs to call um, one method here. So under result, for example. So you are able to configure the, the handler so that it can have different configurations, handling configuration for the same message. That's the main reason. Cool. Do you want to write some code? Finally? <laughs> no? <laughs> so this is this is basically what I told you. Um in in, in slides. Now, what I suggest we do is that we actually just play in a creating a message, creating an handler together. So we are going to add a delete button on the list of bets. Okay? So, where's my ear? So basically, I've got all these bets that have been placed here. I just want a delete button. <coughs> yep. So what it will do, when you click it, either it's a link or just an actual form button, it's up to you. When you click it, it will dispatch, uh, dispatch a message, which is delete bet. And then you will create a delete bet handler, or name it the way you want, that will actually delete the message. So I'll do it as well, so if you want to follow my screen, it's up to you. I'll talk you through what I'm doing. Um, so I first I'll, I'll create a um, delete bet message, which is just a class. And I think it only needs to take a the ID of the bet. My delete bet message. I'm not. I'm just using a public property because uh, I don't need to create the getter and so on. I'm going to create a link in my list of bets. So I'm going to say, well, did bet. I'm just using path. Um, so in Symfony, is that you can actually name root. So you can actually use this thing to generate the link to this root. So now I just need to create this root, which is the, the delete bet root. Um, I'll simply just reuse the same controller because it's um, simpler for the sake of the demo. So I'm going to say delete. Um, that is going to be my my action. So I can say root um, report, let's say ID, let's say delete. I can name it. A 
And if I just do a, I use the, the, the message bus interface. So instead of injecting it on every single action, I will just move it to be basically a constructor of this, of this controller. Okay? And now, in my action, I can just say, well, I will dispatch the, um, the, the, the message, delete bet. And I will a return a beautiful um, message that says, "Did it successfully? Yeah." Now, if I run my code, I have this delete button. I click on it, and then it says, oh, "There is no under for message delete bit." That's the error message I showed you at the beginning. It's a good sign. And by the way, you have this um, Symfony web debug toolbar. So every single place, is every single page that you have um, events going to the bus, you have this little icon here that you can click. And if you click on it, you will have a much greater understanding of what is the message and what, or actually the message and, and what went wrong. So here in this example, you can actually see that we've tried to dispatch the um, up message, delete bet message on the uh, common bus, but actually it was an error, so there's this big ex red exception thing. And you can understand what's the message exactly, you can debug it. You can actually um, see there is no stamps and so on for number reasons, but later we will we will see, see things like that, and you can see exactly the the exception, and you can dig that deep down into it. So once I have this error, I will just create my message handler, which is the delete bit handler. As I mentioned, the only thing I actually need to do is to say, I'm going to do the message handler interface. I am going to say invoke. Invoke what? OK, what does it take? It takes the delete bet message. And here, what we need to do um, is to actually delete the bet. So let's just reuse the same logic that we had for register and get and so on. I will inject the entity manager get the ent and uh, get the repository of the bet and, and uh, delete it, I guess. So I'm going to just do that here. Here we go. So the code of my handler is um, 
So if you're not familiar with doctrine, uh, what it means is that I will just get the, the bet object here, and I will call on the entity manager to remove it from the from the database, and then flush, which is basically kind of like commit the changes to the database or actually do the SQL queries. By doing that, in theory, if I refresh the page, it is much better. It says, well, it is deleted successfully. So if I go back to the home page, the bed is not there anymore. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? Just creating a message and handler, or am I going too fast? A bit? Okay. Sorry? Kind of fast, okay. Let's slow down. Let me know if you want me to, to put some, some of the code I've just wrote on the screen. It's really fun. We can take uh, we can take five minutes to have everybody uh, on board it with that. So if you struggle a little bit with Twig, this is basically how it looks like. So you just create a, um, um, a link, and then you use path, which give it the name of the root, and then the kind of key value pair for the ID, being the, the parameter of the root, for the value bet.id, which is the ID of the bet. Great. Do you have any questions so far? Seems to work for most of you. So you've created your first message and your first handler. The apparently, which is super good, the only uh, the, the part that uh, most of you struggled was the link and the tweak part. So it's a good sign. So let's discuss a little bit about middlewares. So actually, if you look at um, if you look at the code of the message bus, so you can actually look within Symfony, this is, I will not zoom in, but this is the only code that is in the message bus um, class, which is the thing that you, you get when you type in message bus interface. The reason I'm showing you this code is just to show you that there is almost nothing. There's almost no logic. What makes the logic of the bus or the middlewares? So they are things if you used other um, kind of like uh, libraries or other languages, for example, Node, middleware, or like known thing, where it is something that will be executed, that will execute something, give the, the message or the HTTP request to the new next middleware, and potentially execute something after the next middleware has been called, and so forth and so forth. That is the main idea. That's the, the message bus, so the messenger component is basically built on that. In order to create your message bus uh, class, if you ever want to do it by yourself manually, you actually just need to give it a list of middleware. So, what does it mean for us? And, what, and how it looks like? So, a middleware looks like this. It's a class that implements an interface that is called, very original, middleware interface, that has just one method, handle. The method, the method handle takes an envelope object, which contains your message, basically, and takes a stack. The key thing of your middleware is to do this return stack next handle. This line, I think I've even highlighted, I didn't, but this line here, is about, I am going to get the next middleware of the stack and give it the envelope. Makes me think that there is actually a typo here. This should be named envelope. Because that's the variable we use everywhere. So that's an example of a simple middleware that will be able to do something before the message is going to, is, is going to be handled. That's the first line in the function and do something after the message has been handled, which is the, the line in the finally. Right? So that's the concept of middleware. 
by default, we have a bunch of middleware in, in the actually in the bus that you've injected yourself. So these are um, this is a screenshot from the Symfony documentation, uh, which is much better than what it was uh, a few months ago. Um, so you can actually see that by default there are six middleware that are configured within the message the the bus when you get the framework bundle uh, edition of the of, of the Symfony. The most important ones, I believe, or handle message, the last one. So the last thing that will be executed in the stack of handlers is your handle is the handle message handler um, uh, middleware. Sorry, and this middleware will be responsible of trying to find out what are the what are the handlers for this specific message, and then execute them. The one which is just above, which is actually run just before, is the send message middleware. So this is the thing that will be responsible of knowing whether you can, of whether you, you, you need to send the message to a transport, or you need to give it to the next middleware, which is going to call the handler. This is kind of how it works. So that's basically the internals of the Symfony Messenger, this or the, the middleware. There are also uh, two main kind of like built-in middleware that are optional that you can use. Validation that runs the Symfony validator when you dispatch a message, or Doctrine Transaction, doc Doctrine Clear Entity, and a few others from the Doctrine Bundle, which, which allow you, for example, to wrap every handler within a Doctrine Transaction. Things like that. So these or the use case is clearly doing something before, before and or after handling a message or the, or, or the rest of the, the middleware. Now, how you would do that, how you would add your own middleware? Well, you would, in your, in your bus's configuration, you would actually add this middleware um, in English. There is no S. It's, uh, it's a plural uh, version. But you would basically add your class, uh, which is actually the service name. Um, but you add your class name here uh, if you use the kind of like auto, auto creation of services. Um, and then it will be automatically added to the stack. Does that make sense? By default, there's only one place where uh, yours are going to be added. They are the place number four. So everything that is in middleware will actually be there at the, the item number four in the order that you've described it in the YAML file. You have an option to remove the default things that wrap it all if you really want to go crazy and, and change that. But uh, it's, it's very unlikely. So I was expecting a question around this thing, which is, uh, which is these envelopes. So that's a concept that we've introduced uh, uh, really at the beginning of the component. The idea is that it's good to dispatch your own message. But it turns out that when you actually process messages and you actually dispatch them to queues and so on, we need a way to add additional information. So actually, every single message is wrapped into an envelope on which you can add stamps, stamps. And each stamp will actually carry different type of information. This is what we call the non-domain, for every person that is interested in DDD and so on. These are the non-domain information about, you, about your messages. An example is to you can dispatch an envelope. So you can actually wrap your message into an envelope, and you can add, using the whiz method, you can add a new stamp. That's a very simple example where you would say, well, because I know my, my uh, message is going to go through a queue, well, I need to serialize it using this serialization group, for example. In, a, in the middleware, because you have the envelope, you can actually get the stamps. So here's a very basic example where, actually, you can do multiple things here. The first thing is that you, from an envelope, you're, you're able to get the last stamp from its type, from this envelope. It will give you an object, if there is any, on which you can, you can do whatever you want. The contract of a stamp is just a class that is serializable, that, that implements the stamp interface. We'll, we'll create some as well. So you can read, read uh, stamps, but you can also add new ones as well. 
in your middleware. So you can add a new stamp, another stamp, it's your own thing, with message that with, and then that you give it to the next uh, uh, middleware, so then it will be available to other middlewares and so on. Does that make sense? So here's an exercise. So we are going to create our own audit middleware. The idea is just to be able to create a middleware that understands, that can log when the message have been, has, has started to be handled and when the message is finished. It's more or less what I've put in the slides before, but it should be super easy to recreate. OK? So creating this middleware and, and adding it to the configuration. Creating the middleware, it's, it's a class. So we can create, for example, a middleware, um, a middleware folder, and then a audit middleware class. It needs to implement the middleware interface. And the bare minimum is that it needs to do a return stack next handle, i.e. it needs to give the envelope to the, or to the rest of the middleware. That's the bare minimum of a middleware that does nothing. If I want to log something I'm as my audit middleware, uh, there is, by the way, huh, there is, that's for the example purposes, they are, there is already a logger in the, in the, in the message bus and so on. So it, let's say it's something for, uh, yeah your audit requirement. So I'm going to say, well, so I get the message from the envelope. And then I can do something like that. I can just echo, hey, I'm trying to I'm starting to handle the message X just by displaying the name of the class of the message. By doing that, if I re if I actually try, so uh, try anything, like sending messages, it doesn't do anything. What I need to do is to configure it in my config packages messenger thing. And I can say for this bus, the command bus, which is the default one, I will be able to use app middleware or did middleware, I think. By doing that, if I refresh here, <laughs> it says no. I think that we don't need that. Ooh. And then it, it echoes, yeah, I'm handling message X. Yeah? Now, if we want, we can actually do something like we get the result, we also echo finished with the message, and then return the result. So we do something before, we call the rest, and then we do something after. By doing that, if I refresh, I can see, I think it's probably, oh, let's add some HTML in here. Never do that, huh? But then I can see something that says, oh yeah, I've started to you to handle this message and I've finished handle this message. The interesting thing about this uh, this middleware is that they have access to this um, to this envelope. So we can add more data points. We can add more uh, details about this message. Typically what I want is to create a 
an identifier for this using unique message. So here it's using time, but actually what I need, or what I want is to say, that's my message ID equals unique ID, for example. And then I know I have the exact same value here. And if there are multiple um, multiple um, messages being sent, for example, Sam again on France Brazil, and it says like two zero. Here, at least, I know that these two logs are related to the same message by creating an identifier for the for the message. Does that work? For you? Yes. So on the on the on the bus, the default bus here, I add middleware and it's a list of the service names, i.e. the name of your um of your um your class basically. So this is one of the first extension points of the messenger component, is the middleware. Now I'm going to play with my, with my application a little bit, and I'm going to say, well, there is uh, somebody, uh, Evo, that says actually it's going to be zero, 0, as well. And there is a, um, I don't know, someone that says it is 1-1. One one. And then I've got f four bets now. When I report the game result, and I say, oh, actually, the result of the game France, uh, France Brazil was 0, 0, I clicked on Report Result. First of all, it loads a uh, long time. But then I can actually see Unlink Message Report Result, Finish with Message Report Result. The audit did not happen for the messages in between. The reason is that we actually did not enable the middleware for the event bus. But it's OK. For now, it's OK. But that's why. Does it work for you? Great. So now we can actually go to the fun of it, which is, well, this page takes a long time to run. Shouldn't I be able to do that asynchronously? So how can I make this page not spending like uh, not taking four seconds for basically four bets? You ready for the the transports and so on? Sorry. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great idea, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work, unfortunately, uh, because uh, that's a beautiful placeholder for this extremely slow API that we have. <laughs> So we cannot, because we need to send an SMS and, and, and call this whatever system. So for that, what we can, what we can actually do is that the, the one, we know that the one are taking time or the one, the one and the lost uh, messages because of the bad result handler. Yeah. So. If we want, we can st we can say that these messages, one lost, one lost, these times, will actually go through a queue. So, if you actually go into the root, so the package, the config packages messenger, and you actually say, well, I have a transport. I'm gonna call uh, anything, anything, right? So you give it the name that you want. And I'm going to say to Symfony, well, you know, you need to, to root 
this message lost and this message uh, want to do uh, it's it's a real name so uh, we'll do we'll do that transport name okay create a transport from DSN just means you can create multiple of them if you want and now you would you would configure this route if you do that when you re when you run the same page report game result then first of all congratulations it is super fast but we did not actually handle these messages. So the one and the last messages are gone. They're gone somewhere, somewhere in our transport. I need to run this command line tool that I showed you in the slides earlier. Bean console messenger consume. And by running that, I have my beautiful uh, logs with the BR uh, HTML tag that obviously doesn't work in the CLI. But then I can see that my messages have been handled asynchronously and they are somewhere. Does that make sense? That's the idea. You can route messages to transports. Now, the question is kind of like, where are they? By default, what I've done is that I've used the doctrine. So in the in the in the workshops uh, project, the default value for the this um, this environment variable, which is used the one used in in the, to configure the transport here, the DSN. The DSN is doctrine default. So actually, by default, it uses doctrine as a transport to push your messages to. So what it concretely means is that this doctrine transport will actually create a new table in your database with basically messages and uh, bin, uh, the, mess uh, the console messenger consume will actually read these messages or wait for messages to ap appear in this uh, uh, table. That is the simplest uh, way to do asynchronous without any infrastructure. Now, there is another uh, commented line, which is after, which is how we are going to use RubyMQ and have a bit more of a complex uh, uh, way of dispatching asynchronous messages and so on. Now, given the break is in three minutes, four, four minutes, we will not uh, start playing with the RabbitMQ, but that gives you a flavor of um, how to configure the messages to be asynchronous and to go via transports. Nothing? It just works. Is it working for everybody? No? Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Does it work for you? Um, it's messenger consume. Yes. Yes. Please pass at least one receipt. So did you configure your transports? I don't think so, huh? Yeah, you didn't. Yes, exactly. So you need to. So the the key is in the the key is in the YAML file. The key is to create your transport. You just register a transport, so you make it available. right? So it's something that knows that it needs to talk to RabbitMQ, this queue name, whatsoever, or it needs to talk to database, or it needs to talk to anything else. And then, once you've created the transport, you can say to, the, to, to Symfony, well, actually, these two messages need to be routed to this transport name. Transport name being the name of the transport. Not sure how explicit. So, you, you, so, so the question was like, how do you configure the the, the consumers? Um, you would run them, so you don't run them as a cron job. You, they they keep they keep running. So, uh, so uh, they keep running um, as you can see here. 
um, this thing did not stop. Indeed, in PHP, sometimes there's like memory leaks. It's not necessarily ideal to like have the 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 kind of this worker running for for far too long. So this command needs to be run within a supervisor D or system D that will like restart it if it if it crashes. But on top of that, you have indeed options. So you can tell it, well, I will I will stop when I use more than X amount of memory. Or I will stop after I've consumed X amount of messages. Or I will stop after X amount of time. So if you do that, um, and you say, so that's seconds. So if you say, five seconds. The thing will stop after five seconds. But I suggest you use the values a bit higher than that. Do you have any question or anything that's not clear about what we've done this morning? Or like before the break? Or everything makes sense? Yes. So one question, which is why, basically, why do we have multiple buses? So this is just for the example purposes here. So we have, so you don't need to cut anything. I'm just like going to go through the, the configuration. What we've said is that we are going to create multiple buses. The reason we want to do that is potentially, um, and this is kind of more related to things around like CQRS and so on, but you can configure multiple different type of middleware per, uh, per bus. Typically, you would very likely here in the common bus add the doctrine transaction one, because you very likely want that, want that when you dispatch a message, which is a common in the CQRS perspective, it's something that will be synchronous, and then you want to make sure that every single thing that will happen in the handler is wrapped within a doctrine transaction. Because if one of the handlers, if you've got multiple of them, or if the handler fails, then you want to roll back things that may have been saved to the database. That's an example. For the events, you would not care about that. These are examples. So you can configure different uh, middleware for the bus. This is why we would, we would do that. And by the way, um, how? Because when we actually, uh, if you go on this page, the page which is like reports, uh, if you go into the, the trying to uh, the go into the provider, uh, you can see in my example here, there are uh, one command, one message has been sent to the command bus and, and three to the event bus. A question is, how does the, the thing that dispatches won and lost, how does it know that it dispatches to the event bus? How does it work? Do you have any idea? I take that as a no. So, sorry? And that's a good thing. <laughs> so, how does it work? It is actually a, a, an, an interesting uh, thing that we ha you'd have to, uh, to, um, to handle if you are using Oh, sorry, which one is that? This one. So when you actually type int your message bus interface, because there are two um, two services of this type, because you've created two uh, two buses, you need to do something a bit special to make sure that this one will actually be uh, injected as the event bus. The way to do that is a trick on the config on the config services where you have this um, feature um, of the, the, the container, which is bind. Pretty sure you've seen that yesterday with the, if you went to like Nico, Nico's workshop about the, the, the DI and so on. What you can say is that every single argument of a constructor that has the type message bus interface and is named event bus, then you would give it the service event bus. And how, where does that service come from? It is just the name 
that you gave to the bus in here. That actually creates a service named Event Bus that is an instance of the of the message bus. I hope that answers your question. Right. So now what we can do is to actually use uh, MQP, so RabbitMQ. So what we've done so far is to use the Doctrine version. Let's just go and to, to use the, the, doc, the, the RabbitMQ one, OK? So how would we do that? What we would, we would do is to change the DSN that is configured here in the transport. Here, it just says, actually, use the environment variable messenger transport DSN to know where to put or get the message from. If you go into the .on file, you can see, if you scroll down, that the default value here is doctrine default. If you change it to be something along the lines of MQP, it will actually start to dispatch something to RabbitMQ. Now, how you, um, you uh, use RabbitMQ is that if you are using the VM, I think that on the only thing you need to, to go to, or the only thing you need to, to type on your uh, Google Chrome, is local host, and the port is. Can we see that? Can you see that? A little bit. So it's 15672, one and you should have this interface. If you don't use the VM, I will show you a. Ooh, my, what happened? Here's a, um, here's a Docker command that you can run to start RabbitMQ if you want to. The port, again, the port that you need to go to is this one, 15672. Let's like, take uh, one minute to make sure that it works for everybody that you've got this command, this uh, interface. Is that, is that working in the VMs? Because I, I have to admit, I didn't try. Username is super secure. It is guest. And password is guest. So if you actually go there, da, 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 you should see this, this interface. So that's called the management interface of RabbitMQ. Um, it has a bunch of things. I will not go through uh, every single detail unless you ask me. But you can go in queues, and you can see that there is nothing. So it's pure like, blank RabbitMQ. Nothing's been configured. Yep. Now, so docker, docker run minus d means that it will be run in detached mode in the background. Minus host name. You need to put the host name because otherwise RabbitMQ is not happy. You can give it a name. I've, I've called it Rabbit. And then the two minus p or like poor binding. So the first one is the, the HTTP interface. Second one is the TCP interface to send message using the MQP thing. And then RabbitMQ uh, free management is the name of the image. By the way, if you didn't manage to follow the this morning or before the break, I've pushed every code that I've done on the wor workshop, so you can just git pull if you want to. It's better if you have your own code. But cool. So then I've changed the I've changed the the um, the dot env, I think. Yes, I've changed it to be MQP, uh, guess, guess being the, 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 the credentials, local host, and then here it's a special thing that says RabbitMQ has a, a notion of vhost. The default vhost is slash, so it needs to be un URL encoded slash. And then here is by default the name of the queue and the exchange that would be automatically created by the, by the, 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 the RabbitMQ transport of Messenger. If I rerun my command, in theory, everything should still work. No, I think it is. It is. So it, it works. I mean, it, uh, it, it answered. And then now I've got a queue called messages as per our name in here. And it has four messages. Very, very likely, they are the, the two uh, one and the two lost messages. If you want to look, what are these messages? You can actually go to uh, messages here, and they have a, a, a nice UI where you can actually scroll, scroll, scroll down, and you can have get messages. You get the first message, and you can see these kind of things. 
not very digestible. But this is basically your message. That is the version uh, using um, the Symfony, the, the, the PHP serialized, uh, serialized version. Um, the reason it is doing this way is because it can. You don't need to have a, uh, a lot of configurations on your messages for them to be serialized using the Symfony serializer. As I mentioned uh, this morning, you can also make it so that it's pure JSON here. So that way, you can exchange these messages to other systems if you want to. But that's basically what it looks like. Now, if you actually go back to the profiler of the page that I've just used here, there's like all these messages. I don't know anything about them. I don't know where they, they went and so on. If I actually run the bin console uh, again, uh, the consume, in theory, it should work. So it consumed the messages, and then here, you don't have any message anymore in the queue because they've been consumed by the worker. Oh my god. Oh my god. So it means that it misses the uh, MQP plugin for PHP on the VM. Mm. OK. So um, I would try apt-get install php dash mqp. So the, the indeed the mqp uh, transport for uh, um, for messenger uses the the, the mqp php uh, library. A mqp. Yeah, php dash a mqp. Yeah. Oh my god, it works. Okay, so for those of you that are in the VM. There's one thing we forgot for MQP. So you need to run. Um, tum tum tum. You need to run this command in the VM sudo apt-get install php mqp. It installs the, the mqp extension for php. After you've done that, you need to kill the, the bin console server run and restart it. Was it the issue you had? Was it the. Yeah, yeah okay. But just type uh, MQP because it's the wrong name. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Should work. And when you restart your uh, your server, so is there anybody that doesn't see messages in the RabbitMQ console? No, all good. Fantastic. Almost there. Yeah, does that make sense to you? So yeah, in the console, so yeah. Oh. What's the what's the pseudo password for the VM? Web -C. That was the exercise. Your one and last messages sh should go through the queue. Works for everybody. Great. Now, when we actually um, and and we're going to play with the with the the notion of the the envelope and the stems. So here's the problem. I'm going to add on the on both both um, bus. I'm going to have this notion of um, this middleware, the audit middleware on on, on the, the f sorry on the the two buses. So by just doing that, what happens is that when I run this this page of report, I have now my audit middleware that actually give me all these these audit messages, right? So that makes sense. Now, the interesting part is the following. Here's I've got, I've got an ID, which is like handling one, for example. So when I actually consume the message, oh, I was running already. <laughs> when I consume the message here, 
What I'm expecting is to have the same ID. Because that's the idea, I want to have something that is along the lines of the same, the, the having the same identifier, so my logging sort of makes sense. The problem is that they are completely different. Right? So the one here, we, I know it's at least one of them, and I cannot find it in the, in the console. So it's different IDs for the same message. So it's a bit sad. So the first thing that we want to do is to identify when the message has been dispatched, received, sent, or handled. Right now, oops. Right now, I say handling and finished handling one. It's actually not true, because this message actually is not being handled. It's actually being sent to the, to the queue, right? In this, in the UI here. So, the message one for the web version is not being handled because it's being sent to the queue. So what I want to have is that instead of saying handling, I want to say that it is doing something about the message. And then I want to know that it, it's not finished, but I want to know that it sent it to the queue. Same the other way around for the, for the, for the worker. I want to know that it received the message from the queue, and I want to know it's finished handled. So do you have any idea of how could I do that? <laughs> yes. Using the stamps on the envelope. So a stamp, um, I mentioned, is just a... Um, that's the interface that you need to follow, which is basically nothing. You just need to tell it it's a stamp. There are multiple, multiple stamped stamps that have been built in. Not sure if you can you cannot see. Can I zoom that in? I cannot. Oh, sorry. So I'll open a few a few of them for you. Typically, there is the stamp received. This stamp is just a marker stamp for a received message. When a message will be received, it will have already the stamp received message. Received stamp, sorry. There are other stamps. For example, handled stamp, which says that actually it has, which says that the, 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 the message has been handled by at least one handler. There are things like sent stamp, which is a marker that identifies that the message has been sent to a transport. Right? So, how can I then use this notion of stamp to identify whether handling and finished with is actually correct or not? The way you are going to do that is to use the envelope. The envelope has, it's just a, a class, a, a normal class, that has a bunch of methods. The ones that we are kind of interesting with, that are related to stamps, or the folding ones. On an envelope, you can add stamp with the method with. You add new stamp. We've said uh, we saw it uh, already in the slides uh, before. But you add or add more data. Then the last two, which are last and all, allow you to get stamp from the envelope. Last gets you the last stamp, and all gets you all the stamps of this specific type. So what it means is that in here, instead of handling, well. I can actually look whether this message has been received. How do I do that? Well, you don't need to copy that right now, but so you can follow the, the thought process. So I will actually get the last stamp of type received stamp. That returns either the stamp or null. So basically, if the stamp is not null, it does mean that I've just received the message. So I can do received message, and if it's not the case, that it actually means that I've just basically dispatched the message, right? So if we do that, and then 
we actually kill this, the, the worker restarted, and then ref refresh this page, what we can see is that we dispatch, we dispatch, we dispatch this message. Nothing's changed here, right? We just dispatched it. Now, in the actual um, command line tool, I can now see that I've received it. So I have an extra context to run the message. The other example is completely true, is that instead of finished with, what I want to know is that if the envelope has sent, so sent stamp, then it actually means that it's like it has sent it. Otherwise, it had actually handled. By doing that, I can kill it here. Now, now it doesn't work. And that is something that you really, really need to be uh, cautious about. Is that there is, a, there, is a, there is an error in this lovely, um, lovely code. The error is that an envelope is an immutable object. So when you call, when something call, call with or add a new stamp, it returns a new value. Just to show you the interface, with return self. So it returns a new instance of the envelope. What it means is that here, actually, I get, I get an envelope back from the rest of the, of the middle words, but I don't use it. I use basically the previous envelope that I've been, sent, I've been given. So instead here, I can just override my, my envelope variable so that the, the result value here is the new envelope that will have the stamp that may have been added by other middle words, typically the middle word that sends messages to transports. And if I refresh, I will stop that. It's already done. If I refresh, now I know that this one has been dispatched. It's finished to be handled here. And I know that within that handling, apparently, then I dispatched one, and then I sent it to a transport. Same thing for loss, blah, 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 blah. And if I consume the messages, the same kind of apply. I know that I have uh, received it. Oh my god. And it says that it sent it, which is not true. Yeah, yes. Because I still have the sense the sense temp that actually is coming from the that shouldn't be the case actually. So what I'm going to do as every uh, good developer get all the stamps and var up all the stamps when I receive the message. And I have the sent stamp. Hmm. So did you did you see what was my mistake? I need your help here. Because I should have this one. So, so it does, it does. The only thing is that the send message middleware Yes, that's correct actually. So we changed that recently, apparently. But we now have the sent one. The only thing is the weird thing is that we need to have the handled one. Oh yeah, I see, sorry. Here we go. So I want to know if it's been handled or not. That's how I can do it. Because here from the envelope, I should have the handle stem that says it's been handled by an handler. And sent is indeed 
um, is indeed kept as a stamp because we need to be able to know uh, which transport is being used to send it so that we can retry it and so on. And we'll see that later actually. So it's using the handled stamp that we can actually know whether it's been handled or not. Removing my uh, lovely Vardem, I can now say that it's been dispatched and sent, and here that it's been received and handled. Can you do the same thing on your machine? Or did you copy as well as I was, uh, as I was uh, creating the middleware and, cre and, and doing mistakes just for you? Now, if you've already copied it, um, there's one new challenge, which is how do we make these IDs being the same between the, the console and here? Is there any volunteer to like do that on my on my machine and try playing with the stems? <laughs> yes, exactly. What we need to do is to create our own stamp, so we can create like audit stamp, message identifier stamp, whatever you want. When we actually dispatch or when we send, before we send the message, we need to add a stamp that says here's the ID of the message. And when we receive it, we need to get the ID from the stamp. Identify a stamp that you will create. So this is the way you can carry out information. So if you have, uh, I don't know, a an application with multiple services, um, and actually you need to carry something like the HTTP request identifier across different places, so that your logging is actually coherent and so on. That's what you can do. You can use this stamp and do it yourself to carry more context, non-domain information across your application. What I will do is that I will, and then we'll, we'll, we'll stop a bit to make sure that it uh, makes sense for everybody. But what I will do is that I will create my own stamp object. So I've just created a stamp folder. It's completely up to you. And I'm going to create a message identifier stamp, which is a class. Remember, it needs to implement stamp interface. The only thing that this thing needs to carry is basically just the ID. So same idea, one stamp that has a public uh, property. Or actually, I'll do the, the right way now for, because it's a small class. So there is a, a get ID. Right? That's it. That's just your class, your, your new stamp. Now, what you can do is that the logic is the following. In order to get the ID, instead of generating it uh, kind of like here uh, randomly all the time, what I can do is to say, well, if null identifier, so message identifier, so basically, if I don't have a message identifier, what I can do is to have envelope with a new message identifier, which is my randomly generated thing. And I need to use it. The only thing, remember, envelope is immutable, so you need to do something like that. Envelope equals the new envelope is the new envelope with the new stamp. I do less lines, I guess. Well, and I need to use it. So message ID here I will actually get the message stamp, the ID stamp, I guess something like that. ID stamp, get ID. But I need to create this ID stamp. So I'm gonna just use a small trick of the of uh, of PHP, we can do something like that. So ID stamp is the value of that. If it's nil, well, I create it, I override it anyway, and then I add it to the envelope. Up, up, up. By doing that, in theory, 
If I run it, I have this one, uh, send this message, and this is the ID. So now we've got something coherent where on top of the message we have like these terms that go through the queue and you can actually get this value in your uh, in your in your actual like and in the worker you can carry more information. That's one example of the use case of the of the stems on the envelope. And that's 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 the sort of the the yeah, one of the value of creating your own stamp. If you want me to uh, put some uh, some part of the code again on the screen, just uh, let me know. If you don't want to, I assume that it's okay for you to create the class and uh, add the new add the new stamp. That's probably the most important part. When you do envelope width, it creates a new envelope with the new stamp. So you need to just envelope equals the, the, the envelope width. Then it's within the width if you want to trick slightly to reuse the, the, the variable ID stamp. You need to do this slight uh, thing at the line uh, 21. So you can, you can throw me uh, uh, rocks or things if you don't like this syntax. Huh? It's up to you. <laughs> you don't have to do that. But it's, it makes the code smaller, so I can put everything on one slide. Here. Yeah. There's small small differences. You're missing this part. As well. <laughs> and uh, and get and calling the get ID. Uh, no no it exists. The stamp interface exists. This was the example of using your own stamp. It turns out there are plenty of uh, existing stamps. Plenty. There are some. I'm, give you, I'm gonna give you an example where um, stamps also are here to provide the features for you to use. The way you can discover stamps, uh, don't hesitate at all to actually go into the the code the code repository of uh, of Messenger. All right, and if you actually go to the Messenger component, the the stamp the stamp folder, you can see a lot of them. So you have all the ones that we've used, uh, handled, sent, received, and so on. There's another one, for example, is quite interesting: is delay. So, a way to do that, and that we didn't use uh, yet, is we are going to dispatch. So the winners will know that will know. Uh, sorry, uh, yep. the winners will know directly that they won. Fantastic. Right. But what we decided that the losers will know that a bit later. So when we dispatch a message, we can wrap it into the envelope and say, is the envelope with an extra parameter, which is a, I'm going to say a delay stamp. I think it's in uh, milliseconds. It is in milliseconds. And we're going to say, well, they need to know that five seconds after everybody else. Why not? So I need to sort out my um, returns here. So it's easier to read uh, here. Right. So before it was uh, basically sending uh, one after lost, after one after lost. So it's one after the other. In this example here, what we do is that it does the same thing: one lost, one lost. It turns out the first that have been handled or the one one. Because the last just arrived after, because they, they have the delay. I'll put a, I'll put a higher delay, actually, because it, it's going to you see it better. So one one. Cool. And nothing happened. Just the one where I handled directly. 
And then there's this thing, which is this feature that has been added by you. You decided to actually do something later using adding this delay timestamp. And then these lost messages just arrive afterwards, after 10 seconds. And um, if you actually look at how it worked um, in the RabbitMQ thing, it turns out that Symfony Messenger automatically used the, so that's the MQP transport, so configuring that. It created automatically um, a, basically a, a um, an exchange with a, uh, a timeout. So every single time it, it goes above this timeout, it pushed the message to another queue. And that's this mechanism, so that the, 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 the worker don't even receive the message before 10 seconds. There is, so the implementation detail is different for each transport. Doctrine, the doctrine transport, we just have a, a field in the database which says available at. But the main point here is to say that it does create that automatically for you, so you actually don't need to worry about all of the, the details behind it. Just say that you want to handle this message in, in 10 seconds, or in uh, two days if you want to. Do you have any question on that one? Yeah? Yeah? Exactly. So if you want to delay it, to if you want to, you know that you need to run something in, the, in, the, in the an hour or in two days, then you can indeed uh, Compute when do you want to run it? What's the what's the time between the two between now and when you want to run it, and add the delay. That would work. That would work. Maybe for that specific use case, a cron job is probably better. Maybe because it will. So if you use RabbitMQ, it will create this infrastructure um, to handle that. So if you've got random delays all the time, it might not be ideal as well. Okay, so this is basically all the magic features that you've got out of the box when you use uh, Messenger uh, with, the, with, with this transport. There is also a Redis transport. If you want to push your messages into Redis, you can do that. Do you have any, uh, any, any questions on how you can apply that to your own applications on your own like, projects? Is there anything that uh, isn't clear on how you can use it within your project? It's quite simple. Huh? So there is one more thing then. So I'll wait a little bit. Is it, is it good for everybody for the identifier stamp? Yeah? Works for you as well? Cool. So there is one thing as well that will happen to you is that things are going to fail. And um, the typical example of why using a queue is that everything that you do that is related to a third party is very would, would very, very much benefit to be something asynchronous. So if you call an API or you send an email or you send an SMS using whatever API and so forth, this mechanism would be fantastic behind a queue because it means that if your provider is down. First of all, you don't you don't uh, return a beautiful 500 to uh, to your users, but then you can actually retry. So if one execution of the of the message fails, it might be something that you know will be recovered by itself. The system of the provider will will come back up and whatsoever. Then you can use a mechanism to uh, to retry things and so on. If you do that on the HTTP version. Well, you can just retry synchronously a few things, but you will not be able to wait for uh, even like a five or an hour uh, for all the messages to be processed and to be executed. So clearly, we had to do something in the Messenger component so that you can embrace these failures and uh, when it will happen, you can actually manage them. So how it works. Here we go, beautiful slide. How it works is that for each transport, you can configure a retry strategy. By default, this is this configuration. So you can actually say to it, well, if it fails, 
you will retry a maximum amount of three times. You will start with a delay of a hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand milliseconds, i.e., one second, and you will multiply, i.e., multiplier, each time it fails. So the default configuration is it will retry your messages three times. So message ha happens. If it fails, it will wait for a hundred uh, one, one second, try it again. If it still fails, wait for two seconds. If it still fails, wait for f f four seconds. Math. And then it will stop it. So, what you can do is basically uh, try this beautiful code, which is instead of the slip, there is <laughs> something very unexpected. If you do so, and you consume the messages that you need to publish without the delay, uh, where was that report result? Whoa, 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 there's lots of them. I think I will just give you the example with one. Yes. So start again. One was sent. And it says actually, well, received, but it failed. And every time you can see it waits a bit more. So it says, well, uh, twin, 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 um, dispatching for the retry for the fourth time with a using a uh, four second delay. By the way, just using the delay stamp, actually, inside the thing. And then at some point, it tries after four seconds. And then here it says, well, actually, uh, well, it completely failed. So it's not a, an error anymore. It's like a critical thing in terms of like, the, the level of, the, of the, the logger used. And it says, well, here it really didn't work out anymore. I'm going to just re reject the message from the queue. It's over. This is the built-in mechanism for retry. You can tweak it, obviously. So we can actually say, well, packages, messenger. Ooh. So we try five times. And in theory, it should continue five times. Now we waste it waits like eight seconds and so on and so on. Is there anything that is missing in that so in the way of handling the errors? Do you see anything that might be Still not going super well. Yes, yes huh? that's the that's the issue. Huh? If it fails a bit too much, you lose the event, or you lose whatever you wanted to to do or to process, and that is bad. So the question, yeah, the question is, can we configure the um, the retry strategy depending on the message? The answer is no. But what you can do is you can create another transport for it. So let me show you an example. So if you want to, and that's, that's a completely fair um, and, and, and valid point, if you actually want to have the lust to be sort of, oh my god, what happened? If you want the lost messages to be uh, fairly important, and the one message is to be very important, because they really need to do something. What you can do is to say, well, the transport, which is very important, will retry five times. The transport, that, ooh, the transport that is fairly important will retry twice. And that way, it will, so which one is that here? One, so it will five times. So I'm going to do a lust. So basically, um, 
it's 10-10, uh, a bit too much. And I'm going to restart this guy. And then I'm going to say, well, look, I'm going to go for the third important. And this one should say already actually lost or two messages. But so I'm going to say after two retries, it just failed. So that's how the, on the transport, that's how you can do that. Yep. Yeah. Is there any other question? So last bit is clearly if something goes wrong too much, you don't want to lose the data. Because it's it's clearly not really uh, feasible to have a retry strategy that just you can put max retries to zero. I will just continue, continue, continue retrying. But it means that after an hour, it will wait, I don't know, it will wait uh, two days to retry again. It makes kind of like no sense. So what you're going to do is to configure a failed transport. So that is going to be a transport that you will that, that messenger will redirect messages that completely failed. Critical things that have happened. So here's the example. I'm going to use, so I am using um, MQP here for the for everything, actually. So RabbitMQ. What I'm going to do is to say, well, my failure transport is, I can use another environment variable if I need to, but I can say, well, it is actually going to be in Doctrine, so in the database. And I can actually give it the name of the, of the queue using query parameters. We'll talk about that a bit. And I say that's the failure. Where's my mouse? I lost my mouse. Now, if I configure the failure transport to say that's going to be failure, so that's its name. Huh? I'm going to do a bit less than that, two retries. Confirm it from the MQP. Actually, to your question, you can do something like that. It's, it's new. You can actually consume for multiple transports at once. But let's go for MQP. Consuming, consuming the messages for, for this one. Um, and I think this is all, all the lost. It tried to retries. And then um, critical, something went wrong, didn't do anything. So it removes it from the transport. Now, the thing is, it will be in our database. It will have been sent to the, fail, the failure transport. So the question is, how can you see uh, failed messages? So this is where they are. Um, Three comments. Messenger failed show to see all the comments that have been have been uh, all the messages that have been failed or sent to the failure transport. We try and remove. So I'm gonna show you. So bin console messenger failure show. Oops, 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 oops. indeed failed show. Here you can see that well there are actually two messages pending in the failure transport. By the way, I use Doctrine, but you can use RabbitMQ if you want to, regardless of the, the way the transport works. But there are two things that, that are clearly uh, wrong, that went terribly wrong. If I want to, I can actually say, okay, what is it, what is it exactly, like the number two? What is this thing again? Okay, so it's a message lost here. Um, is the is the like something went wrong? Is the original transport? That's what happened before. That's what happened to this message. It was tried, it was uh, redelivered, blah 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 blah. It was tried twi two times, and then it was sent to the failure transport. Now, if I do v v v v v, I have more details about the stack, the exception, and I have more details about the actual message that failed. So I have all the information that I need for me to understand what was the context of what went wrong. And um, a few, uh, uh, it depends, a few minutes, uh, hours, or days, it depends if you release really cycles, you fix the issue. So my release cycle on my local machine is super fast. Doesn't fail anymore. 
what I can do is to say, well, I'm going to retry message one. Yes, I want to retry it. Received, handled, and you're done. And now, there's only, in theory, there's only one message failed remaining, which is the second one. I'm going to retry the second one. You can also just do retry, and it will retry all of them. And now you're back on track, and you didn't lose data, and your system works as expected. Super cool, huh? So query parameters um, is an example where you can start to configure more things. So typically here, Doctrine can have different notion of queues. Same for um, MQP. You can configure uh, your, if you are deep down, or who actually already used RabbitMQ in the room? Two of you. Three, four, four of you. So you may know that, or very likely know, that there is this notion of exchanges, that you can bind one or multiple queues, and, and you can do much more like complex systems where you can have a fan out, so you publish one place, and it, it ends up into two queues, and so forth and so forth. These are things that are much more sort of advanced configuration, um, and that only apply for the MQP one. Uh, there's probably other type of configuration for Doctrine as well. So what you can actually do is to configure these details as query parameters on the DSN. The, w the best way to know what are the available parameters is to look at the source code. Again, Symfony, to be fair, the messenger, uh, the messenger code base is quite easy to understand. It should not be a big issue. And we've put a lot of comments as well. So if you actually look at the MQP transport, so I'm going to go through you to like in the, in the vendor. Um, it's actually a, a pleasant experience. You go to Symfony, and then you go to Messenger, and then you can go to Transport, and you have all the available transport, so you can see MQP, Doctrine, Redis, and a bunch of other classes. You go to the MQP one, and uh, you go to the, uh, the, the connection uh, class. You can actually see all the different query parameters that you can give. So what you can do is to configure the way it will um, manage the delay, for example, so like 90 f 95, if you want something specific so that it goes to a specific exchange name. Right now it was a bit of a like cryptic uh, name of the exchange that is configured. If you want to have your own thing, you can configure it this way. There's plenty of uh, various different configurations. You can manually create the queue bindings of a specific exchange. You can go a bit deep, much deeper into how the configuration is actually done on RabbitMQ using that, 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 uh, that configuration. The same thing applies for Doctrine. And for Redis, you would have guessed. But there is much less thing for, for uh, Doctrine, for example. You can see, oh, where's the name of the, of the table? Where's the queue, which is kind of like different sort of like buckets of messages. Um, timeouts for like if the message was not delivered and so on. Okay. Did you manage to um, play with the failures and so on on your on your machine, or I was a bit fast? I was a bit fast. So we are ten minutes to the end of the workshop. There's nothing more. Except we can create stuff, we can go through how to create our custom transports and so on if you want to. It's quite a, it, it's fairly easy. But do you have before any question that might help you to use that in use use messenger in projects or things that are not clear? Is there anything I can help you to clarify? Because I can see some of your faces are like not necessarily uh, the most confident. So I can show you if you so unless you tell me otherwise, I'll continue and show you how to create manually a transport. So that's the deepest uh, uh, place you can go to with Messenger. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be live coding. Huh? There's no slides whatsoever. If you want to, I will actually push that into uh, uh, the code.
So if you didn't manage to follow, you can git pull now and play with that. So creating your own transport. Um, so that I've shown it. Uh, so a transport, and again, uh, you can stop me at any point. I lost my mouse again. So I'm going to take the example of um, creating my own transport. Well, actually, the winners are going to be sent to MQP and another transport that is going to send that to a third party. So basically, uh, give me a name of a third party, something that uh, company something. The name of another system. Hmm? Google Analytics. Let's go for that. Fair enough. Let's let's say we send it to Google. We're working with Google, you know. So what we can do is to say, well, I'm gonna name my transfer Google, and I'm gonna create my own stuff. For the sake of the example, I think we can use. Um, we say it will be an HTTP request going outside to. A to a Google web server. So let's imagine that we want to create our own stuff. Well, what we will do is to say, we, we can create our own um, scheme, scheme in terms of URL scheme. So here, you can put whatever you want. For the fun of it, I'll put HTTPS something. So And then I will use a request bin, actually, so we can see the content of the request. So request bin, that one. I can create a request bin. And that's going to be basically where I want to push my data to this web service. So if I do that um, and I actually run that, it should properly uh, say to me that this thing does not exist. Google. My God. And it did not say me that it's it's because I don't have any winner. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go for a winner. So it's like uh, here, one one, one one is a winner. It says well, there's no transport that supports the given the DSN. Makes no sense, right? So what we can do is that we are going to say our Google Transport, whatever you want to name it, and you need to create a transport. So uh, transport class, Google Transport, that will implement a class. You, you could have guessed it. It's called transport, transport Interface. It has a bunch of stuff. It, is, it needs to be able to get messages. It needs to be able to acknowledge them, reject them. These are the parts of the transport of like getting some messages. And it needs to be able to send them. Realistically, for our example, we don't actually want to, to um, reject we don't want to hack because it will be a send-only transport. Okay, you happy with that? Yep. So the only thing that we need to implement is this send method. So here we will have to do something. But just doing that, just creating this transport, will not help us that much. So the only thing we need to do is to register a transport factory. So I'm going to say Google Transport Factory. It is a class, again, that implements a transport factory interface. And this thing has two methods. It supports, yes or no, this DSN with these options, and it creates a transport. What we can do is to say, well, to be fair, if um, so it is basically DSN. So if it starts with HTTP, well, we support it, right? We return true if the beginning of the DSN is HTTP. So this transport factory can create this, this, the transport for this DSN. And how we do it? It would just return new Google transport and DSN. Turns out the DSN is the path at which we want to send the the message, right? So that's our URL in here. So what we can say is like do something. So it's basically send message to 
this the URL. And we'll do the implementation afterwards, but that's kind of the idea. If you now refresh it, what will happen is that uh, it it's displays properly the right message, but it actually doesn't return the envelope. It needs to return the envelope. That's part of my contract. Didn't read it, did too fast. And if I redo it, then it says, well, send message to whatever. And that is what we've actually put as the DSL. So, if we want to, we can actually use something like, do we have it? We don't have it. An HTTP client? My God, what have I done? And then I need to s I need to Google it because I don't know how to initial the initialize the thing. Ah. So sending a post request, you need to create your client here. Client request post this the URL, I guess. And then you can probably give it some data. Is it data? It is body. So I want to send a body, which can be, well, it will be my message, right? We'll have to serialize it somehow, at some point. What is wrong with that? Yeah, it might fail. So we need to serialize it and so on. It turns out actually the create transport uh, method here in the transport factory already gives you the serializer here because it is the serializer that's been configured for this transport. I mentioned that already, so you can configure that for, for the entire uh, messenger system. So what we're going to do is to just add the serializer to the Google transport. Oops, what is, what is that? So Realizer, we add it here. And then we can say this, that serializer, that serialize this thing. And here we go. And if we run that, oh my god. Yes, indeed, that's the wrong serializer interface that I've given you. Here, it's not the serializer, it's the messenger serializer one. And we try again. And something will have happened. What have, done, what have I done? Cut to undefined method to PHP serializer serialize. Oh my god. Yes, that was the wrong interface. Sorry. Encode the envelope. Something happened. If we go to request bin, in theory, if we refresh, wow, we've got our message. And we basically have everything that we need to in order to sort of like decode it or to get the message. And you've created your own transport. That's the example with HTTP. You can create whatever you want. Um, and push that as an open source uh, package so that everybody can benefit. I think that's a fantastic uh, end for the for the workshop. Do you have any uh, question? Any remark? If you're amazed by the component, you can say it. It's fine. <laughs> Great, cool. So then, thank you very much. Uh, you can find the the, the code on this uh, repo that you've already uh, seen, and um, have a great end of the the conference.